In this video I'll show you the fastest way to generate floor tiles that you can customize and change on the fly with a free plugin called Floor Generator and also how to create custom woodboard textures in Photoshop with just a click of a button. So let's get started. To download this plugin you need to go to cgsource slash floor generator and in here you have two choices. You can either download the free version which will give you the option to use the standard running bones as you can see here or the full version which can give you another four different floor patterns. After download you get a zip file with all the different max versions. You need to choose the right one for you and you need to copy it into the 3ds max root plugin folder. After that just turn on 3d max and you're good to go. So we're gonna start by adding a simple shape. You can either a closed spline or even a simple plane. Let's make a rectangle. I'm gonna do it 5 by 5 and now let's go to the modify panel and search for floor generator and right off the bat we got ourselves some floor now let's go over some of the parameters we have to tweak over here this is the pro version as you can see we can change different types of floors Obviously we need to change the size, see it better. But let's stick to the standard, which is the one you're gonna use the most. So let's start with the length. I'm gonna create a wood board floor. So typically it's gonna be 120 centimeters long. You can specify if you want a, a different minimum length. So it will be from, uh, let's say 40 centimeters up to 120 but I'm gonna keep it the same. Uh, this is the width, let's make it 15 centimeters. Again, you can vary the width from something small to up to 15 centimeters or more. You can change the grout length, which is actually the gaps between each board. This is gonna be an interior wood floor, so I'm gonna keep the gap as zero. I'm gonna make them very close to each other and I can also change the offset if I set it to zero you can see there is no offset whatsoever if I make it 50% each board gonna meet its neighbor in in the middle of the board so let's keep it on 20 for now and in here we can control the extrude amount let's keep it for uh, about two centimeters and the bevel amount. So this is now a half centimeter. We can make a very large bevel or let's make it 0.2 for a very fine bevel. Okay, let's turn on the wireframe mode so we could see it a little bit better. Okay, so that's the basic board parameters. Let's see how we can add some variation to, to the objects. I will increase the grout for now. Let's make it something very big. And in the variation per board area, you can see we have a max rotation. So if I go to top view and start increasing the max rotation, you can see each board gonna get randomly a bit rotated. So we have a max rotation, we have a minimum rotation, we can have an offset. So you're gonna move each board out of its line, the maximum and minimum. We can also have a tilt option. If I increase it, you can see the board starts axis. And we can also add an overlap between the elements. Okay, so let's get back to our uh, previous floor. I'm gonna zero all the variation. Let's make the grout at zero. And now in the general tab, we can change the overall scale. Let's bring it back to one, to 100. We can change the direction. We can do like 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and so on and we can change the offset. If I want to move the entire floor on the X 
axis or on the Y axis. Now the floor generator is going to automatically set a random U and V mapping to each board and we will see it later on when we add a material. And lastly, we can save the parameters that we changed into a preset. So you can click this button and save it for later use. So now let's add a material to this floor. And if let's say I will add a simple wood texture, let's give it a mapping. You can see that this way it won't give me the right look that I need because now the texture is mapping seamlessly on top all of the boards. And now it looks more like one big piece of wood. Instead, what we want to do is to have different wood texture to each tile and maybe have some random in the uh, brightness of each tile. We need to make some separation. So for that we're gonna use a multi-map. So we can either do it in V-Ray. We have the V-Ray multi subtext which looks like that. And we also have pretty much the same map in Corona. So let's just quickly add a Corona material and, and we have the Corona multi-map. So both work pretty much the same. Let's apply it. Okay, so at default we have six different slots for textures. Now in the viewport we're not going to see them. So let's make a quick render. And as you can see each tile gets different slot. We can change the mode. For the flow generator we can either use it by material ID or by element. If you use the material ID you can see that we get some patterns going on here and if we change it to mesh element we're gonna have it pretty much completely random and we can change the randomness by changing the seed parameter. So for full randomization, let's go with the mesh element. And now the next step will be to load different wood textures. So before that, let's see how we can create those te textures really easily and fast in Photoshop. Let's open up Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. I already loaded up the wood texture that I've downloaded from Texture Heaven. We have a diffuse map, a normal map, and a reflection and glossiness map. So now what we wanna do is slice this texture into several pieces. So for that, I'm gonna use the slice tool. Let's drag it on top of the texture. Now let's right click, select divide slice. And in here we can define if we want to do a horizontal slices or vertical. For now, we're gonna go with the direction of the wood. So let's make five, seven, I think seven could work nicely. And now let's go to file export save for web let's zoom out so we can see all the slices and we need to drag and select all the pieces change it to jpeg we want to make sure we have the maximum resolution okay so let's specify a folder and hit the save button now let's look at the folder we can see we have different slices saved out automatically we're gonna do the same for the other layers, just turn off each layer and repeat. All right, now we can go back into 3D Max. So we wanna load first all the diffuse texture Click on the batch load, select all of the diffuse textures and click open. Now let's copy this texture to the flexion we're gonna do as a copy. Now let's load the other textures of the reflection. Copy it as instance to the glossiness. And we're gonna copy as well to the bump. Now let's play a bit with the material to make it look nicer. Gonna add a reflection. Let's bump the reflection up. And let's reduce the effect of the maps so we can get it a bit more reflective. All 
Okay, now let's make a little bit of a variation to the diffuse map. So in here we can set a random hue and random gamma. If let's say I'll increase it to 3%, you can see how we can get different gamma to each board and change the hue as well. So now let's go with, let's say 2% and 2%, maybe one and a half. This should be nice. And I always like to add some material to the grout, like in real life. So I'm going to add a plane. Let's give it some basic material. Let's sample one of the colors of the wood. Now we want to bring it up ever so slightly gonna bring it up like so we're gonna obviously need to reduce a bit the saturation maybe make it more like so and there you have it if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to get notified on future videos i'll see you next time